Have you ever met anybody who was out of their mind? Who off their rockets? And how did you know that? By the things they said and the things they did. Be loving. The things he spoke, the things he did, the people he associated with, his insistence that people love one another, be loving. In the third chapter of Mark, we hear this description of Jesus and his family. Then Jesus came home and the crowds came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he's gone out of his mind. He is beside himself. His family thought he was crazy, and they tried to get him under control. The scriptures this morning tell us that we should love one another as God loves us. We are told to be loving. Jesus commands us to love one another as he has loved us, to love neighbor, and to love our enemies. This is a different message. This is a different thought. Is Jesus out of his mind? Perhaps he has not met people like our neighbors or our enemies. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is what he is saying as they are killing him on the cross. It's crazy to love like Jesus, to forgive like Jesus, to do justice like Jesus, to love mercy, walk humbly with God, and not to condemn. This is crazy thinking. It will probably even get you in trouble today. It's crazy to try to transform the world, to change it, without armies, without force, but just by love. Our first reaction to this commandment could be something like this again. But Jesus, you don't know my enemies. They are not good people. My neighbors are not good either. They are different. They look different. They do things that we don't do. They can't appreciate the things that we do. They do not belong. They may not be happy here. They may be happy elsewhere. Several years ago, and I do mean several years ago, I had the chance to sit in on a faculty commission out at uh, Washington University in St. Louis. And the faculty was laying down the policy for uh, admissions for the next class. They didn't look at all 10,000 of the applications. They only selected about 10 of those to look at so that they could devise a policy. But one thing struck me at this meeting. That was this young lady from southern Missouri from the Ozarks, I think. And one faculty member with his pipe in his mouth, looking very stern but scholarly, said, I don't think this young lady can appreciate this kind of education. Maybe we should not admit her. Despite her test scores, and despite her grades, she was not one of them. And they did not want her. Why should we love one another? Today's second reading, and the gospel gives us an answer. In addition to the question of why we should love one another, they also give us an indication of how we can love one another. And there is a backstory that comes with the gospel readings this morning. And we are told by seminary professors that if you really want to understand a passage, read the passages before that passage in question, and then read the passage afterwards and that will give you an indication of context and actually what is being said. So we'll do this. So we meet Cornelius. Cornelius was a non-Jew. He was powerful, but he was also generous. He had a vision one morning about 11 o'clock, I would suppose, just before lunch, in which an angel appeared to him and told him he was to meet a man named Peter. About the same time, Peter had taken his mid-morning nap, getting ready for lunch, and he had a vision as well. And in that vision, he saw the sheet, sheet coming down, 
and it had all types of animals and fish and etc. on it. And a voice called out to Peter, eat, Peter, eat. And Peter said, no, sir, I cannot eat them because my faith tells me these things are unclean. Although the passage doesn't say it, but we can imagine that voice became very irritated. And the voice said back to Peter, I do not create things that are unclean. I do not create things that are ugly. Even though Peter uh, further said, these things on this sheet are not on the approved list. He was told to eat, eat. So at that point, it became obvious to Peter that, the God, that God was speaking to him. So Cornelius arranged to send his people over to pick Peter up and bring him to his house. Now this in, its, in itself is exceptional. For Jews did not go to the houses of Gentiles, and Gentiles did not go to the homes of Jewish people. Gentiles were not allowed in the temple. As you will recall, Jesus overturned the tables when he declared that this house was intended as a place of prayer for all people. And so you can see Peter has a dilemma. He can either think conventionally, his conventional thinking, or he can think outside of the box. He can be exceptional in what he does. And as we know from the stories we've heard about Peter, he was exceptional. So Peter went to the home of Cornelius. And while he was there, Peter started to preach. We know that Peter was a good preacher, preacher because it's in several of our songs. If you cannot preach like Peter, you cannot pray like Paul. We know that song. And as Peter was preaching, the Holy Spirit descended on all of the people in the house. For Cornelius has invited several of the Gentiles to hear Peter preach. And during this time, Peter thought out loud to himself, why should not the waters of baptism be extended to the Gentiles who are in this room? Because the Holy Spirit has come upon them just as the Holy Spirit has come upon me. Following that then, the Gentiles were baptized. This is an important mo uh, moment in Christianity because again, it raises the question of whether or not we're going to think conventionally, or whether or not we will be orthodox, if you will. Peter then thinks to himself that maybe conventional thinking is not the best approach to the situation we have here, because we don't know the answers to what is going on around us. The whole Middle East, that whole area, Palestine, is in flux. And the Romans are bearing down as they ever had been. Again, what happens here was century-old customs and food laws were dismissed or were gotten rid of, as far as Peter was concerned. But then he had answered the invitation to actually visit and speak in the home of a Gentile. That in itself was revolutionary. So that brings us to one of the points in all of the readings today. In Jesus calling for us to love our neighbors as ourselves, he is also calling for us to think outside of the box, to get rid of the conventional thinking. And we might say here that conventional thinking, while it has its place, it did not get us the vaccine that we're all taking or are getting ready to take. Conventional thinking did not get us on the moon several uh, years ago. Conventional thinking did not get us to Mars. Conventional thinking has not gotten us the modern miracles of medicine, the things that we've learned about history. It has always been someone who is willing to step outside of the box. And even those who stepped outside of the box, even though they may be challenged, they may suffer, but nevertheless, that is the way we have developed as people of God. Peter was different. And again, the cradle of the message is think outside of the box. In this time of pandemic, and we have several of those, we have one due to uh, the uh, coronavirus 19, we have an economic pandemic, we have 
and uh, a pandemic of food insecurity and housing, and we have a pandemic of racism. All of these things have come to pass in one year. Things will never be the same after 2020. We are already starting to think about how we shall do church, how we shall do school, how we shall practice medicine, and we are already seeing some dramatic changes. But this again is what Jesus calls us to be. Lift up your heart, he says. Think beyond what you see. Blessed are those who believe but have not seen. G.K. Chesterton has said, thinking different about our neighbors and our enemies is not easy. And we know that from experience. Because love is not easy. Even for those people that we like, it's not easy. So Jesus put in the form of a commandment that we should love our neighbors and our enemies. Again, because he knew that giving love was not easy. The commandment, while may be clear, but the task is very, very hard. And Jesus knew that it would be hard, but here are some of the people, or some of the kinds of people that Jesus associated with. He associated with lepers, with women who were outcasts at that time, prostitutes, elderly people, aliens or outsiders, tax collectors, debtors, sick people, blind people, Gentiles, rich people, people who had been discarded. These were the kinds of people that Jesus associated with. And what was Jesus' answer to these uh, people? His answer is the same answer that he gives for us today. Jesus was inviting. He was inclusive. He was affirming. He maintained or insisted that people maintain their dignity. He fed people. He made sure that people understood that God forgives them of their sins. He touched people. He liberated people. He called people to be embraced, to be healed, to be cleansed. He honored people. And in doing so, he frees people. It is no wonder that in the Gospel of John, we hear that the truth shall set you free what is that truth? The truth involves God's love. But today, not only are people living selfishly, but they are living, in many instances, with hatred and disregard for others. Curiously, many of the people, some of the most outstanding, outspoken people, claim to be Christians. We have come to know, that, uh, come to know God by being like God. In other words, we can know God by imitating God. We have come to love God by loving like God loves. So how can we show love? Same question we ask the children. How can we make sure that people understand who we are and about our love? Perhaps thinking through and changing whatever attitudes and behaviors we have, wondering, what are we protecting? How are we thinking or acting out of our own security or insecurity? How are we hampering God? How are we hampering the freedom that God gives us by our denial of a show of love? Jesus said in another uh, setting, and we've already said that, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The good news this morning is that while we are willing to follow the Spirit and lead us into a future, this future, if we act in love, is one we can never predict. It is one that breaks through the boundaries, the customs, those limiting customs, but we still experience the all-encompassing love of God. How many times have we had a great idea that came out of nowhere? Those ideas don't tend to come in environments of hatred, in environments where people are challenging each other, where people are not showing love. But they tend to come out of loving environments. And we know that because we know how children learn. We know that their environment in loving allows them to learn more easily. How many times do we see people these days who refuse to wear masks, 
who refused to practice social distancing. My doctor told, tells me that if you refuse to do the things that I do, you're simply going to die earlier than you should. And maybe we need to hear that message. I'm not sure. Someone says that's not good bedside marriage. How impossible is it for us to believe the scientists, the doctors, those nurses, those hospital officials, the EMTs? Why is it so impossible for us to understand what they have been telling us? That these things are serious. Why is it impossible for us to believe that they are practicing love for God's people when they do their jobs? Why is it that there is so much hatred that abounds? Conventional thinking again did not create the vaccines and did not create the other miracles that we are experiencing today. They did not create, conventional thinking did not create the works of Einstein. Did not create uh, the works of, of, of Joseph and others. Conventional thinking has its place, but in order for us to grow, in order for us to experience God and the love of God, we have to move beyond and unbind ourselves from the limitations that we have. God is love, and that love we hear from Paul in Corinthians, that love is not rude, that love is not boastful, that love does not insist on its own way, that love makes room and space for others. It creates space for the new possibilities, for the dreams, for the visions, for opportunities, a love that is unbinding, custom-breaking, limitless, freedom-giving. God did not make us because of God's need but out of God's love. We were created by love, for love, to love, and to be loved. Amen. Amen.